The Adventures of Ruby. The crystal city glistens in the moonlight. Three of the six moons of Summa Nula are shining down, casting weird shadows in this abandoned city. Yeah, yeah, not totally abandoned. This was once an automated city. Now the rusted slidewalks no longer move. The winds blow through the broken city. What else? Whose thoughts? Oh, yeah. Slimies. Biogenetically engineered assassins out for the hunt. I can feel their mind nets sweeping the city. Okay, mind webs. Spun from cool, slimy thoughts that drift out to touch and freeze you in your tracks. So they can step up and blast you away. I move silently. I feel the mind web searching, sifting, trying to pick up human thoughts. In the faint light of the three half moons, I see someone moving across the square. Wait a second, that, that looks like me. What the? They cut her down. Her circuits are oozing out of her stomach. She's not human. That's interesting, a Frankie that looks like me. Oh, she's still kicking. She's trying to get back up. Yeah, it's scaly back is turned. I step out. I let it hear the sound of my blaster being set. It whirls and fires. I slow it down and slip aside. A beam scorches past my head. A chunk of the city flies into the sky. Slimy is surprised. It missed. It didn't know I can control time. I smile. Here's a kiss for you. My name is Ruby. I'm a galactic gumshoe. A good one. The time is the 21st century. The planet is Summa Nula, crossroads of the galaxy. And this is my story. I call it The Big Deal. Limey's had blasted some Frankie. She was dressed up to look like me. On closer inspection, I discovered she didn't look like me at all. Ruby. Yeah. What's your name, kid? Angel Lips. I am a Frankie. Yeah, I noticed. Your circus is spilling out all over the street. I've heard. We'll find your body shop. Ruby. Why are you dressed like me? Ruby. Shut up and answer. Ruby. Look, kid. Answer, or I'll short circuit your intestines. Ruby. Why? The tentacle is reaching for you. Yeah, <laughs> tentacle. Oh! That tentacle wraps around my face and neck. Drags me back and throw a slit in the wall. <laughs> Ruby? I'm looking at a thing with four tentacles, three eyes, a thin blue mustache, and wearing a red fez. I am the Tukar. Get your tacky tentacles off of me! <laughs> Certainly. Oh. Uh, but, but, but please do not reach for your blaster. The Tukar is quicker than Ruby. I doubt it. <laughs> What's a ball of tentacles like you doing in a town like this? I monitor the city. Mm. They are closing in, spinning a mine net for you, Ruby. Yeah. I I wonder what that Frankie did to put the slimies on my back. The Tuka is quicker than you, Ruby. Uh, I know the K Kapoorian hired you. Oh, <laughs> so you know that fat little rat-faced Kapoor. <laughs> he has hired me to assist you. Look, tentacles, I work alone. I may be able to lend a hand. <laughs> Forget it. I have a cube. May I play it? Sure. Hmm. Ruby. That's right. My name is Rodant. I'm a Kapuri. What do you want, Rodent? Rodant, not Rodent. So what do you want? We want you to find out who is manipulating reality. Get out of here. Wait, wait, please. My people will pay handsomely. How handsomely? Most handsomely. Sit down. Thank you. Someone is trying to control the mind of this planet. The media, Rudy. The media have given them the power. It is driving everyone crazy, 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 crazy,
Technology will only advance their powers. We cannot evolve, mutate fast enough to cope. Something must be done before we all go mad. Head, 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 head. There may be a conspiracy, Rudy. Conspiracy. Why me? Because you serve the Lords of Chaos. I'll fix him. That was hardly necessary. A little rodent. Rodent. Huh, I'm talking to a fat tuca. Four tentacles, three eyes, thin blue mustache, and wearing a red fez. <laughs> so, the rat-faced Kaburian has hired you to find who is controlling our images of reality. You got it. May I offer you a drink and extend a friendly tentacle? Sure. <laughs> the Tuca extends his friendly three-fingered tentacle. I shake it. He has a good grip. I've shaken a lot of things in my life. Hands, paws, claws, fins, antennae. But there's something creepy about a tentacle. Those little suction cups fastening onto your skin. And this Tuca's got four tentacles. So how do you know if you're shaking his hand or his foot? <laughs> this was once a fully automated city. It was built to last for several millennia. It actually functioned for about ten years. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I left a Frankie lying out in the street. I'd like to drag her in. Ah, this is the central controls. I have repaired some. The weather is still a problem. Uh, there was once a time one could predict the weather and then create yeah, yeah. it. Look, Spider, yeah. save the tour. Mm. I'm going to get her out of the street before she's stripped for parts. I drag her inside, pick her up, and dump her on a table. The Tuca finally helps by scooping up some of the circuitry that's oozed out of her stomach. Ooh, lovely creature. Exquisite, fine, long legs, smooth, plastic flesh. A perfect humanoid body. Mind if I roll her over and examine the other side? She's up for grabs, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> ah, well crafted. No visible seams. What are you looking for? Hmm? Her power pouch. Ah. 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 Wouldn't expect to find it there. One hides their power in strange places. I can see that. <laughs> mm. uh, we'll give her a flash charge, huh? Uh, here, clamp this onto her. Right. Uh, we'll see if she wiggles. Hey, you got a lot of zaps here, Spider. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Uh, the used android market's not bad, but uh, I, I hate to see her melt it down before we cut it. To... You're getting results. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Move it lower. Huh. I guess that's the spot. The Tuca and I charged up the Frankie. We got her ticking, but not talking. The Slimies had blasted a hole in her big enough to stand in. <laughs> Should be able to plug into her memory. A little fine-tuning? My name is Angel Mr. Ah. I am a Frankie. Ah. A class seven. A class seven? I was created by the Damn. The Lazarus Android work. Clips work, work. slipped. The black star far far. Mm. In my dreams I want 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 want. The black city city. I can I can I can I can Hold I can Don't move it. I cannot distinguish between my programmed dreams and reality. You're not the only one, kid. One creates the other. other. That's smart, Frankie. Every night they take away my dream dream. Replacing them with their own. You've been watching too many commercials, kid. I know now that I was created to program myself, so they do not want that. Who's this they she keeps talking about? The, the dark star, 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 the black city, city, city. I ride the slide walk, it walk, it walk. They spiral down and down, 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 down. She's stuck. Pick her up and slam her against the table. <laughs> She has ceased. Guess that was the wrong thing to do. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I believe we can... Listen. Huh? What's that? 
and not only uh, that, another memory chip when you consider that telepathy telekinesis teleportation were once considered to not even exist because listen to this 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 this, this. because it did not fit into any known model of physics so how could it exist and since no one believed it exists even though it was right under their noses it simply did not exist so they did not know they could do it 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 listen i know you are not going to believe this but the stuff we call physics 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 they used to call magic I decided to get the Frankie out of there, but the city was crawling with slimy, biogenetically engineered assassins looking for me. Where can I get her repaired? Hmm? Uh, I highly recommend the band of renegade techies known as the Digital Circus. <laughs> okay. So, how do I get out of here? How did you get here? Rented an air car. Well, there you go. I need a diversion. Of course. Uh, here, we have the central weather controls for this sector of the city. It is not fully operational, still. Uh, there was a time when one could predict the weather and then create it. Mm. What do you have? Perhaps a fog. Nah, fog won't stop a slimy. Yeah. Yeah, they don't like lightning. Yes, I have been working on that. Make a little contact here. Turn up the gain, and... Nothing. Ah, of course. You know the bandwidth? Ah. Yeah, that'll do. Just don't singe me. Oh, of course not. Oh, this is a pleasure. I heave the Frankie on my shoulder. It's night out, but that won't stop a slimy's eyes. I duck down an alleyway. The Frankie ain't exactly light. Suddenly, at the end of the alley, a slimy leaps out, takes aim, but too late for him. I slow time. Let him have it. The air car is hidden on a rooftop. I climb the steps of an abandoned building. They're hot on my heels now. Catch my breath and wait. Hey, sucker! Suck on this! Ha. Up onto the roof. There's one hopping across... Tuka took that one out nicely. Singed his scales. Oof! Hey, you! Nothing worse than burnt slimy. Oh, there's more hopping across the rooftops. Tuka takes out another. I hop in the air car, flip on the protective shield, and blast my butt out of there. The Adventures of Ruby. First, a quick flashback. Aim that one nicely. Bubble the scales off his back. Oh! Ugh! Nothing worse than fried slimy. Oh, pee you. I fire up my rented air car. Set a course for the digital circus and blast out of there. Mm. My name is Ruby. I'm a galactic gumshoe. A good one. The images they create, create reality, Ruby. The fat little rat-faced Kapoorian. We want to hire you to find out who is manipulating reality. They are replacing my dreams with their own. The Frankie, built and programmed for some guy's pleasure. I've never seen one like her. Andor, a young techie at the Digital Circus. What is her name? Angel Lips. Ooh, yeah. They know how to build them. Feel her plastiflesh. So real. It's 
warm, even. I love technology. Hmm? Yeah, they used to have inflatable dolls, now they got this. I hurt. Andor here is one of the best. He'll fix you, kid. Oh, where am I? The digital circus. Be gentle, Andor. I'll be gentle. Angel lips. <laughs> Don't cry. It's all right. The Frankie that can pump out hot tears. Nice. The digital circus is on an endless pilgrimage across the planet, from one great component dump to another. They scrounge for parts, build bizarre devices. They bring their wizardry to the villages and towns, set up their inflatable domes, and perform their electronic circus. What they're really up to. <laughs> I got a few ideas, though. Ruby? Yeah? I found something. I return to Andor's mobile. The Frankie's lying there, stripped bare. Hmm. She sure looks human. Andor has eyes for her. I found who had her built. Here. TJ. What's that? There's more. Teru. TJ Teru? The archaeologist. Hmm. Apparently she's his custom-made model. Isn't she beautiful? Yeah. I was as big a sucker as Andor. If I could have seen the future, I would have cut her up and sold her for parts. The Digital Circus is setting up their inflatables for a performance tonight. That's what I've been wondering about. Yeah. Dropouts, misfits, men, women, creatures, whose creative technical minds can't be held in check by the marketing demands of the safe regions. They move from one electronic component dump to another. They build strange robot animals. Sometimes they take on the locals who've built their own robots. They have wrestling matches or tests of intelligence. They teach the locals what they know. They pass on the information. Yeah. When they take on the big boys, the digital circus always loses. Yeah, on purpose. They lose. Because to know your enemy is to enter into combat, gather data, and appear to be no threat by losing, then pass on the information to others. The performance begins! Classic three rings. The digital circus begins with the invocation, calling forth the blessings of their guardian spirit, Nikola Tesla. Yeah, he wanted to give free electricity to everyone. Tesla believed that energy didn't dissipate, that you can take a small amount and amplify it didn't fit the known physics of the time. It's our minds, that's the problem. The lights dim out. The crowd falls silent. Huge generators suddenly fire up. Towers take shape before our eyes. Bolts of electricity flash back and forth. Tremendous arcs of electricity crackle overhead, and there he is, Tesla himself. He's sitting there, reading a book. He's wearing soles on his shoes that look a foot thick. Bolts snap and sizzle above his head, filling the dome. He stands up, looks at the amazed audience. Free electricity for everybody. And then he goes back to his reading. Yeah. Tesla has given his blessing. You. Out there. You're the performance. I left the digital circus and headed to the nearest jump port. From there, I hopped south to bounce down on the edge of the Great Zebus, a jungle. I rented a slither truck and plowed further south through the tangled mess to the site of Professor T.J. Teru's We're uncovering dig. uncovering what we believe to be one of six ancient Nullian cities. One for each moon? We believe so. You know, according to the myths, there were once seven moons orbiting Sumanula. Oh, yeah? What happened to the seventh? Well, that's why they call it a myth. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to the Nullians? much speculation as to why an entire civilization should no longer choose to exist. 
You figure it was their choice? Well, that's the theory. And what's your theory? They may have evolved into some higher form, you know, no bodies. And... Oh, yeah? What then, light? Sure, light. Light. Well, you know, the whole city's been buried by this devilish vegetation. It looks like a jungle of ficus diversifolium or something like that. Uh, but the sectors originally built below the surface are relatively intact. Come on in. Interesting. Yes, certainly. You know, we've finally broken their language code. Mm. You know, the language has puzzled us for a long time. The problem was the scholars took it all so seriously. It was under our noses and we never saw it. So what? Well, they had a great sense of humor. They constantly joked about things. Possibly everything was a joke. They were masters of punmanship. Punmanship? <laughs> yeah, sure. It's hell trying to translate pun. Try one. Well... A typical Newlian story might begin, uh, Once upon a time in a galaxy Once far... Once upon a time? That's <laughs> awful. Well, it's difficult to translate. That's my point. How old is this place? It was abandoned about 10,000 million years ago. Hmm. You ever heard of the Black City? The Black City? Black City? No. Where did you hear of the Black City? Hmm, friend of yours. Black City. Where did you hear of the Black City? Hmm, friend of yours. Black City. Where did you hear of the Black City? Hmm, friend of yours. Black City. Black City. Hmm. I find myself below the Great Zebu's jungle, down in Professor T.J. Taru's dig as they burrow about in an ancient city. There's a vast underground system here. We don't know the dimensions or how deep it may extend. But I assume you have reasons other than passing interest in archaeological digs. Yeah. Has to do with your Frankie, Angel Lips. Mm, I see. She was built for you, right? Yes. Yes, I desired a companion. She was custom made to my specifications. You have good taste, Professor. Angel Lips is well built. I'm aware of that. You had a program to program herself. You an android liberationist or what? I believe this interview is over. Look, Teru. That's the... enough. Now, here's your hat. What's your hurry? The Slimies tried to blast out her guts. She was dressed to look like me. Now she's got the Slimies on my back. Why? I see. I see. I, I wanted someone that would, to some extent, Think for herself, not merely follow my command. <laughs> you got what you paid for. I beg your pardon? She left you. Yes, yes, but the truth of the matter is, that was in her program. She has her own destiny. You really are an android liberationist. That wasn't part of my specification. You never thought of sending her back to her maker? For a little fine tuning. That's not unusual. She pleaded with me not to. I, uh, I, I couldn't do it. I, I mean, I, it would mean altering her personality. I... The poor sucker had fallen in love with his own creation. Angel Lips has the ability to see what you want and to be what you want, like... I like plastic. I like the way it feels. I like... <laughs> she I like was the way built for a purpose other than just your companionship. You were set up. I'm aware of that. You just let her go? I couldn't have her dismantled. You're a soft touch, Daru. Well, someone else knew, too. The programmer? Yeah, when I provided my personality data, it was obvious that... And I was the fool they'd been waiting for. Oh, God knows what she's up to. Who built her? Lazar's android work. Lazar's. Well, she has a questing mind. I taught her what she wanted to know. She wanted to know everything. Everything I know. Why? Everything I know. Why? Everything I know. Why? Well, she has a questing mind. I taught her what she wanted to know. Why? She wanted to know everything. Everything I know. Why? I don't know. 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 We're beneath the Great Zebu's jungle. Professor T.J. Teru, the noted archaeologist, having dug up a good chunk of the jungle, has finally stumbled upon an ancient Suma Nulian city. The Nulians had a wonderful sense of humor, Ruby. Suma Nula means the high point of nothing. <laughs> Figures, they've been extinct for 10,000 years. 
We know that planets have an intelligence of their own. When a planet is evolving, changing, it affects everything on it. There may be other forces, Ruby. The mind creates its own model of the universe, and what we see is merely a reflection of the universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that. Say, Ruby, uh, what's that you're wearing? Listen. It looks like plastic tights. Real tight. Listen. I like that, you know, plastic. Listen. Plastic makes me hot. There's something in the shadows. Huh? Over there. Something in the shadows. Where? There. Don't use your blast. Shh. The reverberations caused by that blast from a cook will bring this city down on our heads. There it is. Oh, did... I... What a set of fangs. It's not venomous. You sure? Yeah, of course I'm sure. They're known as saber-toothed snakes. Harmless species that prey upon rodents and uh, ah! robots, laser vipers. Damn, it's after you, Taru. Oh my God, there's a second one. They're out to get you, Taru. Thought you'd never ask. You're trying to kill me. Oh, oh my God, they went to kill me. That's right. See, uh, nothing happened. The ceiling is quite in. Hmm. Huh? On second thought, you were right. It's coming down on us! Quick, Ruby, before we're buried uh, alive in this... Are you okay? Taru? Professor? We knocked down a wall. There's a whole other world down in there, a subterranean city. What's that? Some black furry fellows? Impressive set of claws. Nice feet, too. Could use a manicurist. A little squinty in the eye department. Nice noses. They sure can smell me. What can I say? We all sweat. I hope you guys are root eaters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name's Ruby. Look. No roots. Soft, furry pelts. Claws that could rake Godzilla's belly open. Short snouts. Stubby antennae. A little squinty in the eye department. They surround me with curiosity. Are amazed by my lack of fur. You guys got some pretty good coat material here. That's the problem with aliens. You can't understand what they're saying. I know, I know. I'm the alien. Yeah, well, look, 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 you guys. Professor T.J. Taru, the noted archaeologist, is buried beneath that rubble. How about digging him out? Mm, communication problem. I doubt if my translator... No, nothing here for moles. Aha! That perked up an interest. Yeah, you're pretty handy with those rakes of yours. Friends of yours, I hope. I'm amazed. I didn't know they actually existed. I think they want us to go home with them. <laughs> Delightful. Let's hope so. You people are in the process of excavating the entire city. It's awesome. Hey, Ruby, do you understand what an extraordinary find this is? Yeah, I'm impressed. To what depths does this city extend? It's a regular anthill. I've got... Mole hill. Sorry. They preserved everything, even the graffiti and the street sign. Yeah, if you see an exit sign, let me know. Yeah, they certainly appear to be friendly. Let's hope they're vegetarians. I believe they are discussing what to do with us. Yeah. Their teeth look like they're more for snipping and mashing than ripping. Well, no canines, no carnivores. Look, they've gathered around a strange apparatus. I don't like the looks of it. Yeah, 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 all right. The chief molar wants us to stick our heads in there. Is that wise? Yeah, it looks like an automatic mind translator. Well, put together from old hair dryer parts. It may have an adverse effect on our minds. Yeah, but it may take care of my split ends. 
Stuck down in the ancient Nulian city, the moles of Zebus insist Professor Taru and I stick our heads into what may be an automatic mind translator, but could be an old hair dryer. I don't know if this is going to be a permanent or not. You think this is going to cause some damage? Who knows what makes a mole laugh? <laughs> well, they're insistent. All right. Lower away. Okay. Ooh. Ow. Oh. It's a tight yeah. fit, isn't it? Mine's not bad. <laughs> oh, there you are. Yeah. Yeah, you're coming in clear. I hear you. What's your name? My name, my name is whatever you wish to call me. Mm. Mm. The professor here is fond of puns. How about Moliere? Mm. <laughs> As you, you wish. That's disgusting. <laughs> you have a name for this city? Oh. Whatever you wish to call it. Uh, how about, um, the molecular <laughs> structure? Oh, please! <laughs> I thought you liked moldy puns. Ah. <laughs> Your friend is disturbed. I'll try to mollify it. <laughs> if you like, if you like, I'll answer your question. Are you the chief molar? <laughs> Can't take the punishment. Huh? Oh, no. I assume that you people are blind, huh? Not as blind, blind as you, Professor Turu. Are they reading our minds or what? Pretty good chance. Yeah. Then why are we whispering? You got a point. We cannot read your minds, and we are not blind. We have been aware of your excavation, Professor Taru. We wish to discuss this in some detail with you. Uh, digging up their molehill. Oh, please! <laughs> what are you guys going to do with Professor Taru? I, I believe we can come to an understanding. I certainly can. You potholed half the jungle looking for this city. You're in for it now, Taru. <laughs> Say, Moliere, uh, why are you excavating the city? We are devo devo devoted to learning what the ancient millions knew. Your excavation methods are different than ours. We dig from the top down, you dig from the bottom up. We are aware of the destruction you have caused to our jungle. I told you. <laughs> The Nudians devoted their existence to developing consciousness. We have been able to reconstruct some of their methods. You may find this interesting ruby. Follow me. Hey, what about these hair dryers? No, it is portable. Oh, okay. Warn me if we're going through any short doors. You will find this most, most interesting. Yeah? Why? Um, it is a game called <laughs> Cosmic Pinball. There's something going on here, Ruby. No kidding. These moles have been digging up very million cities, only digging from underneath upward. I got my eye on that one. You make a great coat. Very funny, Ruby. We follow the chief molar through the winding alleyways of this underground city until we enter an arena. There's an enormous transparent sphere suspended from the ceiling. It's so big. Apparently, the sphere is the whole playing field, and inside it are all sorts of flashy gadgets. Astounding! It is a recreation of the original Nulian game they refer to as Cosmic Pinball. You climb inside it to play it? No, oh, yes, indeed. What's the purpose? Um, cosmic Pinball was a means of developing telekinesis. Telekinesis? Uh, oh, you mean bending watches with your mind? It is not done by force or willpower. It is done by two Tuning the mind to another level of intelligence, or simply stated, getting in tune with the object. Yeah, our own pinball is a good example. You don't move the ball with your mind, but you get in tune with the machine to the point where it does affect the ball's movement. Ruby, would you like to play a game? Is it dangerous? Not really. All right, I'll play it anyway. Well, this may prove interesting. I'll explain. As you see, it is three-dimensional. You sit in a bubble capsule within the playing sphere. Here, mm -hmm. climb in. Okay. Controls, as you can see, they operate the mobile flippers, but also controls your bubble as you maneuver around the sphere. And what keeps the ball from smacking into me? Your wits. You'll notice there are several different types of bumpers. The standard telescoping mushroom bumpers, the exploding pop bumpers, and the powerful bumper bumpers. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I strap myself into my flying bubble and hit the activate button. 
Lights and lasers burst forth as the first huge metallic ball, glowing like a comet three meters in diameter, comes firing out of the chute in the top of the sphere. It misses me by about a meter and careens off a thumper bumper that sends it toward a self-activating flipper that fires it right at me. I just about spin aside before it gives me a good whack, sending me ricocheting off a negative point target while the ball drops into a black hole in the floor. This could be dangerous. The second ball comes blasting out of the chute. I catch the thing with a mobile flipper that sends it off a random bumper and straight back at me. It smashes into me, knocking me off a thumper bumper, and we both drop down the black hole in the floor. The black hole spits me back out again, and I'm ready for the third ball. Come on, Ruby! This damn ball is programmed to react to me, not just to slam randomly into bumpers and targets. I fire up the third ball. Come comes screaming out of the chute, whacking against a floating bumper, smashing against a starlight target. I catch it with a flipper, sending it into an exploding pop bumper, and right at me again. Away. I relax and take a hit that jars my teeth. Oh, you're fighting it, Ruby! Oh, shut up! Come on! I gotta extend my intelligence throughout the whole mechanism. The bumpers, the flippers, the damn ball. Loosen up. Watch it! Ow! Oh, I'll get that ball. I drive beneath an attacking bumper in pursuit. I'm finally feeling the rhythms of this game. The randomness of the ball becoming an extension. No such thing as coincidence, all extensions. The ball finally drops down the black hole. Get away! Floor. The game is over. That was so-so. You want to try it? You may have noticed that you cannot directly affect the game. Mm. <laughs> That's not the way telekinesis works. Yeah. You must become it, then you can affect it. Cosmic Pinball Ruby. Next time, mm -hmm. all year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We talked into the night. Except down here beneath the surface, they didn't seem to notice. I told Moliere about my being hired to find out who is manipulating media reality on this planet. The mole said something I never forgot. Mm -hmm. Who is creating false realities is unimportant. You are wasting your time and someone else's money. Mm. I don't see it that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. What is important is the counterforce. What? Mm -hmm. Counterforce? Mm -hmm. You talking about a conspiracy? Mm -hmm. Yes, a co consciousness conspiracy. Care, care to join? Huh? Mm -hmm. Can't you see he's joking? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> I leave Professor Taru with the moles. Goodbye, Ru. I got a tip from Andor back at the Digital Circus and decided to sail to the Utopias, a lot of little islands where crackpots put into practice their views of how society ought to be run. I'd purchase a set of solar wings and catch the currents south. The air currents are at their finest this time of year. Ah, there's something about solar sailing, stretching out, being a bird. Oh, I love it. It can be a little hairy. The solar wings are like gauze. I was attacked by a huge gaffer bird once, intruding on its airspace. The thing tore my wings to shreds. I came down like gaffer droppings. I sail clear of those. I bought a pair of solar wings and caught the air current south. I'm sailing along when I notice a solar ship moving across the sky. It's the most beautiful solar ship I've ever seen. Its wings are like lace with puffs and fluffs for sails. He draws in the spinnaker so I can glide alongside. I can see he's an alien. Nice, delicate features. His eyes are exceptionally large. His hands are delicate, with long fingers, a high forehead. He must be an Aurorian, a culture devoted to aesthetics. A gentle, some say, Decadent people. Hello there. Mm. He has a beautiful smile. I find it totally disarming. <sighs> that an alien can do that to me is a little disturbing. Where are you headed? The Utopias. Which one? The Monarch Islands. You part of the monarchy? <laughs> Hardly. I'm not a Utopian. I'm from another solar system. I love your ship. I've never seen one like it. Can you come on board? Why? I'd like to show you what the ship can do. All right. 
He sends out a line. I fold in my wings and settle down like a dragonfly on a milkweed pod. It's an exquisite ship. All fluff and down. A whole other solar technology. His long fingers take my hand. He has little sensors on the tips. My name is Monet. I'm an Aurorian. And you? Ruby. I'm just a solar floater. You are heavily armed for a solar floater. Someone's liable to mistake me for a gaffer bird. <laughs> As you wish. Some tea? Sure. Where are you setting in? Casino City. Oh, that's for high rollers out of my class. Please come as my guest. Uh, thanks for the offer. I'll pass. I'd like your company. You'll have your own quarters. I'm not trying to seduce you. That's too bad. <laughs> I like Earthlings, but they make terrible lovers. What's wrong with us? They are so unrealistic. They make love to an image rather than to who is actually there. How large is your sampling? I've never made love to an Earthling in my life. Oh, you read a lot, huh? <laughs> no. We Aurorians have a group mentality. Oh. Uh -huh. What one experiences, all the others may experience. So, my sampling is fairly large. Hmm. Yeah. I'm in the cosmic connection in Casino City with a handsome and arrogant Aurorian. He's playing a game called Black Void Roulette. It's a purely mental game. The more blank your mind can become, the better you are. You can call it instinct. It's much more than that. It's dangerous. People don't always return. I decided to give it a try. This isn't your old-fashioned roulette wheel. This looks dangerous. Prepare to place your bets. The wheel begins to spin. Faster and faster, whirling in a hypnotic spin that feels as though it's going to suck my mind into the vertigo depths of the black void. I spin down, down. Alert, alert. Place your bets now. My, my fingers, fingers slowly move to the touch controls on the table. The numbers move in a smooth rhythm. I feel a strange creation forming out of the void. One. One. The creator. The creator. Two. Two. Duality. Duality. Three. Three. Balance. Balance. Four. 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 Material. Material. Five. Five. Change. Change. Six. Six. Beauty. Beauty. Seven. Seven. God. God. Eight. Eight. Fate. Fate. Nine. Nine. Wisdom. Wisdom. Numbers are expressions of what is invisible. There is a higher intelligence embedded in numbers. They create, but the game has its own direction. I feel it moving away from me. The reality I've created is rejected. It doesn't match the void's reality. I been out. The trick to this game is to separate fantasy from reality and figure the odds. You Earthlings never have been very good at this. Well, fantasy is our reality, so what do you expect? That's the point. You... Slimies. Biogenetically engineered assassins out mind-sweeping. Can you tell who they are? Two are cats, a ginger and a freddy. The ginger is wearing a sequined emerald green evening gown, playing the holosphere. On the other side is the Freddy. He's playing death to taxes. A Freddy? The cat, dressed to look like Fred Astaire in a tuxedo top hat and real tail. Are they after you? Could be. Slimies are a lower life form, far as I'm concerned, whenever I can. I kill them. This episode is over, but the very best of my collection is banned on YouTube. To see what you have been missing... Go to archive.org and search for Gyro Screw Loose, and I'll see you there. <laughs>